So I'm back today and I've got Micah with me. Um, we got a quick little project that we're going to do, uh, something we can finish in an afternoon. Um, we are going to build a new chicken feeder. So I've got a box of parts here and all together I would say this project cost me about $20. Um, and it could certainly be done cheaper than the way we're going to do it. Um, I've used, I've built one of these before, and when I did the last one, I used three inch uh, PVC pipes. And the problem is with more birds out there now, they're going through feed quicker and we're filling our feeder about every two days. So our goal with this one is to upsize the feeder, build it a little bit bigger, uh, give us some more capacity, storage capacity, so that we can get maybe a week uh, between having to fill food. So the first item that you're going to need is a 4-inch um, sanitary tee. So this is what it looks like. Uh, I've built them out of 3-inch before. Um, but to upsize this one, we're going to start with a 4-inch piece. Michael, what else do we got in there? You grab one? Okay, that is a 4-inch cap. That's going to be our top cap for our tube to keep all of our water and moisture out of the fill tube. What else do we got? That is a three inch cap. That's actually going to fit up on the inside of our sanitary tee. And that's going to be our bottom surface that the chickens will eat off of. We need a three inch to two inch reducer. And that's going to fit down inside of our tee. That's our uh, spout down on the bottom. That's what keeps the feed from just running all over creation out the bottom. So we're gonna put this together one step at a time and explain that. And last but not least, we need some heavy duty cement. Uh, the reason I go with the heavy duty is because this is gonna be sitting outside. Um, also, some of the fittings that we're putting these pieces on are not the way these PVC were meant to connect to one another, and so relying on the glue joint as much as we are, I wanted to go ahead and get the heavy duty. To begin, we want to mark our sanitary T. Now, what I have done is I've taken kind of an imaginary line from where the edge of the pipe would be uh, in the vertical direction coming here, and I've marked that uh, vertically. And then I've taken the center line for the horizontal and I've marked that. So right where those two cross is where we want to make the mark. Then you're going to want to extend those marks like I've already done over here um, to kind of give you a cross section. So this is the area of the sanitary tee that we're going to remove. Um, the birds need to be able to get their heads inside and this is a little far back for them to reach all the way down in and get the feed. And so we're gonna remove this section of the tee and cut it out. So our first step to cut this out, uh, we're gonna start with a hole saw. I have probably an inch and a quarter bit in this right now. And I'm gonna line this up on the pipe so that the two sides of the hole saw are right on those lines. I could measure out and pre-drill a hole, but I'm gonna try to do this just quick and sloppy and see how it turns out. Here. All right, let's check where we're at. That looks pretty good. for eyeballing it and guesswork that looks pretty darn good so now we just have to do the other side okay so we've got our holes drilled on both sides all the way through so now it's time to cut out the straight portions of the line now to do that I'm gonna use my chop saw here um, obviously that's not the way a chop saw is intended to be used so if you want to use a chop saw, please do so very carefully. Uh, this could also be done with a vibrating multi-tool, um, which I have used in the past, um, or even just a regular handsaw. Um, this is the quick
quickest version for me to do this, so that's how I'm going to do it. Um, because it's kind of dangerous, I'm not going to film doing it. Set the phone down. We're going to get this all cut, and then I'll be back. Now that that's done, here you can see the, the piece we cut off. We have a pretty sharp edge on the rest of this PVC. And you can see we got a little flat here um, on the collar just to make sure that we could get that as flush as possible. So that's left us on the inside of the tube here with a pretty sharp edge. And because this is right where the birds come up, we want to smooth all those sharp edges out. So to do that, I'm going to use my Dremel tool just with a little sanding disc on it here. We're going to go over all those edges and make sure there's nothing sharp, nothing that can hurt our birds. can see we just kind of run our fingers over it we don't have any sharp edges there's nothing that can cut or scrape or scratch got it all nice and cleaned up and smooth so now we're gonna start our assembly. first step to gluing is to use primer on all PVC use primer. Gets all the gunk and grease and oils and everything from shipping in your hands and all that off of it. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna prime all of our surfaces and then we're gonna glue this up. Okay, so we're gonna run a little primer around here. And then we're gonna get a little primer around the inside here. I have both of the feeders that we're going to make set up here and Mike is going to put one of them together and I'm going to do the other one. Uh, one of the things actually my boss told me worked really well when you're trying to teach your kids things are to do two of them. You do one and show them how each of the pieces goes on and then have them do the other one on their own. And since Mike and I try to do as many projects together as we can that's the way we're going to do this one. So you ready for some glue, Mike Man? Yes. All right. So we've already checked our fit for our pieces. So what we're going to do right here is we're going to take a little bit of glue. We're going to put the glue on the inside of the big ring here. And then we'll take our piece. And we're just going to fit it in. We don't want a lip or anything on the inside. We want it to be nice and flush and smooth. So we'll get that in. And kind of smear that glue around here. That way, as our feed hits the bottom of the pipe, it just channels and funnels right into that little two inch pipe. Okay. I'm ready for some glue. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, and get a little glue on around on the inside. Okay, you fit your coupler piece in there. Okay, and remember you gotta look on the inside. Oh, no, don't drop it. You gotta look on the inside to make sure you're lined up. See, that needs to be pushed up a little bit. Push it up. Push it up till it's nice and tight. This is as tight as I can get it. No, it's not. I need to get it down in there. Oh, I think I got it too far. Yep. Can you push it down far. a little bit? Mm, push it down. Cool. Sure, it's not going to hurt you. Push it down. Well, it's nice and flush. <clears throat> All right. Now you need 
you take your finger and smear that glue around the edge, all around the inside. It's nice and smooth. Now uh, can I go wash my hands? Well, when we're all done. I should have warned you that this is going to be messy. We got a couple other pieces to glue, and we'll go wash our fingers when we're all done and glued up. Okay? Okay. Okay, so I don't remember if I mentioned or not, but we bought a 20-foot section of the 4-inch uh, PVC pipe. Um, I went ahead and got the cellular core just because it's a little bit lighter. Um, and since this is for a chicken feeder, we don't really need the heavy-duty stuff. So I've taken and I've cut a couple of 6-inch pieces off the end of that pipe. And this is going to be our base. This is going to be our stand. Um, and that's what's actually going to hold the feeder up off the ground. But as you can see, if we left it just like this, all that feed would fill down into the bottom of that 6-inch pipe. And since we want to keep it really just as a dish up at the top for our chickens to eat, we need to put a plug in. So to do that, we're going to use this little 3-inch cap. And we're going to set it basically where it would be right on top of that little 6-inch stub of a pipe. And then we will put our coupler down over the whole thing, like so. We tried some fit and finish with these, and we found out our caps are actually going to work better if we do them out instead of down. That'll give us a little lip for that feed to build up on the inside. There's just one problem. The outside of our cap is just, just about the right size as the inside of the cellular PVC, but it's not fitting. So we're going to use our Dremel, and we're going to angle down that edge just a little bit, just so we can force that cap in there. set it down here. And I'm going to try just with some real forceful but gentle pressure to see if I can get that down inside. I think that's going to go. So let's go ahead and get some um, primer on it and I'm going to go grab a rubber mallet. Okay so what we have done now is we have both of our end caps inverted and in our pipe. And you can see one of them is a little further hammered down than the other. We're not going to glue these. Um, this is a tight enough bond that just using a little rubber mallet and making sure that that PVC is really nice and clean and right against the other piece, I think that's going to hold those in there good and tight. So we're not going to worry about gluing it. So now that we have all of our pieces together, we're going to start our assembly. So we're going to start with our base piece. That's the piece we just made, which is a six inch piece with the cap inverted. So we're going to set those down on the ground. Then we're going to take our sanitary tee that has been cut and that's going to go down over the top. Mike, I think yours is upside down goes the other way, buddy. Okay. Good job. Okay, does that fit? Dry fit? Okay. Feel pretty good? Or do you think we need to adjust it? I can hardly get it down. You think we maybe need the hammer on it? Yeah. Okay, I but our hardly. cup is fitting pretty close to our ring insides. So I think once we get some primer and some glue on there, I think we'll be able to hammer that down. So we have our base pipe primer. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put a little glue on it. Get that all the way around. And then just to be safe, I'm going to put some glue up here around this joint. We're not going to glue those pieces, but we'll slop enough glue on there that when we force it in, It'll all be held together. Okay. So we're going to set that down. Now can you put your feeder up on top of it? Alright. Is it 
in there tight enough? Or do we need to come down? We, we gotta come down, down. okay. Is that looking tight? Okay, so as you can see now, inside the top of that three inch cap is sitting right flush to the flared inside of our sanitary tea. So that will be our cup for our, our little chicken feeder. All right, so we got one more to do. Dad, can I put this in? That goes in next. Okay, so does it go in the bottom or the top? That one goes in the top. So it goes like this? No, other way around. Just wait. We'll okay. do that next, okay? Can you put this one on for me? Can you get this up? Put it down over there. Alright, there we go. Is it tight? Here. Ugh, no. Hit it hard. Harder than that. Harder. Oh, we're getting there. Gotta get it before the glue dries. Oh. <laughs> All right, hit it hard. Keep going. Got to get it all the way down. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Your hammer works better when you hold it out on the end like, no, not like that. Hold it at the end of the hammer, swing. There you go, see how much more oomph you got? Good job, okay. So we have both of our bases in, those cups fit nice and tight inside of that sanitary tee. And it holds it up off the ground, just high enough that our girls can come in and peck in there. So now, we're going to put in our spout. And you'll notice the spout's kind of angled. And this fits down in the top, kind of like Mike has got there. And we want to angle the spout so it's, That's mine. So it's Wind like up. that. Mine's lined up. We want to have the open part of the spout towards the front of the tube. And then this is actually going to fit down. Oh, that was a bit too far. It's yeah. going to fit down on the inside of our sanitary tea. See, Dad, look, mine, this, mine Just is where like it's that. supposed to be. So what we want Should be way up here. is inside of there for that little spout to be just about flush or just about even to the bottom of the sanitary tee um, because our feed will come out as high as this pipe so we want to make sure that um, we don't overflow it accidentally okay so we did a test fit with our reducer in the top and then how it came out in the bottom and unfortunately, this is one of those things where when we scaled it up, we didn't really account for the change in this design. The bottom of our pipe here is now higher than the edge or the lip here, which means our scratch and our grains are going to fall out. So we need to extend this or, or move it further down so that it's flush to the pipe. Um, this still leaves plenty of room for the chicks or chickens to get in and peck up the scratch and the grains and everything, but we don't want our feed to overflow. So we're gonna make some adjustments to our design here and see if we can extend that down a little bit further. Okay, so after some trial and error, we figured out that our little angled coupler pieces that we had glued in just were not quite long enough and they weren't angled the right way. So in order to correct that, what we've done is we've taken, I had some scrap two inch pipe here. And so we have cut a two inch pipe that is just a little bit bigger 
than our cup holder. I don't know if you can see that or not. It hangs down a little bit further. So we're gonna dry fit those up and make sure they're nice and tight and work. Okay, so we're gonna take our new pieces that we've adjusted the height since we are doing this at a four inch this time, it's a three inch. And go ahead and get some glue on there. Make sure I get around that bottom too. And then I'm gonna fit them. Just to get everything nice and tight. There we go. And we'll clean up the inside a little bit. And that looks pretty good. So we got a pair of those now, and we're going to Dremel out. This is a little sharp here. What we did, instead of using our smaller adapters that were too short, um, by adding the uh, extension using the 2-inch pipe, I just cut it at a 10-degree angle, I think, 5 or 10 degrees, on, uh, on the chop saw. So I'm going to go ahead now and Dremel out the edge of that. There's not a lot of chance that the birds would be in this close, but better safe than sorry. I just want to take all the sharp edges off of anything. The Dremel is really one tool. All the DIY stuff that I do. This is the third Dremel that I've purchased. I've worn out two of them so far. Um, but this is really something you just you got to have. It's way too handy and we use it on too many projects. Okay, so now it's time to take our tapered ends here and we're gonna put them down inside of our feeder. Now, when you look at the angle, you want the angle to point to the back of the feeder. So the part that hangs down more needs to be towards the front. And then, probably going to depend on where you get your fittings as to how they fit but in this case our fitting comes with this little nub right here on the side that you see poking out and that means that it fits just nice and snug in there with no adjustments or anything and that's what we're looking for so we're going to go ahead and primer and glue that up and you'll see from the front now the front of that tapered pipe comes to just about even, maybe just slightly above the lowest point on our T. And that's what we're looking for, is just so that feed doesn't fall out um, the bottom of the cup there. So we'll get them all in and rotated. How's yours look, Mike and Ann? That looks pretty good. Time to glue them up. So we're going to go ahead with our primer and get that all the way around. We'll take some glue. This one we're going to get this really sloppy because we know we've got that gap that we got to fill. Make sure we get plenty of glue in there. So let's bring it over and find where our point is. Now we are ready to put our fill tubes on. So in our case, we're using one of these inside of our coop. So it's going to have a much shorter fill tube. And then one of these we're going to use outside the coop. So we're going to put a, a nice big long fill tube on there. Now, I'm not going to glue these in. Um, the reason being, they're going to fit plenty snug down in the top. And if we ever decide that we want to adjust the volume, it's much easier to pull that pipe out and cut it off. So, we're just going to hammer these down. And then when they're done, we'll put a cap on the top. That'll keep all the rain and moisture and everything out. And... When we want to fill it, we'll take the caps off 
and we'll dump our bucket of chicken feed down the end of the pipe. And as they eat it, the feed level will just drop. I'm working on, I'd like to figure out a way visually that I can show how much feed is left in the pipe. So we might try to do that with some weights or counterweights that would drop as the feed drops. Um, I might try to, to cut a slice on the table saw through that pipe and maybe put a little window or something there where we can check the feed level. But I'd like a visual way to be able to see how much feed is left from up in the house without having to run all the way down to the coop. But for today, we're done. What do you think, Mike, man? Yep. Yeah. Think these are gonna work? Did you yes. put the other one together? Yes. Can you get the fill tube in there? All right. That was easy. Let's go put them out in the coop. So here now is our installed feeder inside of our coop. Uh, got all of our grains and everything in there and it just sits on the floor of the coop so when we're empty we can just grab it pull it out um, but I got it shoved over there in the corner just so they don't knock it over if it becomes a problem I might put a little hook mount or some zip ties or something to kind of hold it in place but for now I think they're gonna do just fine so here's our large feeder installed out in the run you know. And as you can see, it doesn't take long for the ladies to figure it out. This winter's been pretty tough. They've been going through a lot of a lot of food. Um, so hopefully the new feeder does a pretty good job. They're kind of messy when they eat. Everything that you see on the ground there is not spilling out of the feeder. It's it's what they knock out when they peck. But I found that whenever they're eaten, they're usually eaten together as a group. And there's really not room for them all to fit their heads inside. So if one of them knocks a few crumbs out on the ground in front, then that's what the other ones get to eat. And anything that the girls miss... The mice that live underneath our garden boxes usually come over and take care of. So that's our update. Um, also, if you haven't checked out my video on building the chicken water heater, um, here's our heater can down underneath our water. And it is doing a great job for, I don't know what I spent on it, less than $10. Um, it, does just as good as the $50 version from Orsland. So we've just got that plugged into an extension cord that runs back up to the house. So I'll put the link in here. Uh, you can watch that if you want to see how we built that. Um, I've also got a video of how we did this chicken run here. Um, this is built out of four cattle panels. And we've done some modifications, some changes. We put the tarp on the top and We've added some of the rabbit fencing around the bottom. Um, not so much to keep the girls in as to keep other critters out. We've had a problem with possums this winter. Um, wanting to burrow under our coop and try to get in there. So I'll put a, a link to how we built the chicken run as well. So that's it for today. Um, hope you enjoyed our video on how to build a chicken feeder. Um, I will keep posting updates. If you like uh, what you saw from us, go ahead and click subscribe and like. And if you got any questions or comments, uh, just leave them below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can.